right now, very pleased to have with us on the show from Breitbart News, Ken Klukowski. And Ken, good uh, good afternoon to you, sir. I'm so used to saying good evening. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us during daylight hours. Great to be with you, Cam, and congratulations on your time slot. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, now, you, your uh, latest piece, Obama's gun control campaign, doomed to fail. I, 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 I'll be honest with you, Ke- uh, Ken, I don't want people to get cocky here. I don't want people to think that, you know, we've got this one in the bag, uh, but you do say that, you know, the, the way that this is going, what he is uh, putting out here uh, and, 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 you know, the, the, the tact that he is taking uh, is divisive and, and his record on firearms is a failed one. Well, in fact, Cam, I had two meanings with that phrase. The only one where I meant it definitively is I meant to say it is doomed to fail at protecting children from gun violence in schools. His strategy is utterly ineffective. It will not achieve the, uh, the objectives for which it is supposedly designed. But also, as a political matter, I think it is likely that his uh, gun control plan here uh, will also uh, fail. Uh, the legislative parts will fail to pass Congress, and then there are aspects of it. There, there are some minor aspects in terms of internal federal government work where maybe he can make it stick. But there are other aspects of it, that if he were to apply it in, uh, in particular ways, I'm fully confident that he would, uh, that he would be uh, stopped in court. So any way you look at it, I call that a failure. But you're absolutely right. This is not the time for apathy. This is the time for action from all of your listeners. You, you bet. And you know what? I, I, I 100% agree with you that the things that he's calling for uh, would be a failure if, if the president's trying to make kids safer. Uh, if the president is, you know, just trying to make it more difficult to be a gun owner and exercise your constitutional right, if the president uh, wants to, is trying to make it, you know, uh, culturally unacceptable to become a, a, a gun owner and to uh, want to exercise your constitutional rights, uh, actually, you know what? Even even then, uh, Ken, I I think in terms of the culture war, uh, you know, it, it's it's funny to see the 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 members of the uh, entertainment industrial complex and the media industrial complex just thoroughly befuddled by these poll numbers showing the NRA enjoys a, uh, a more public approval than Hollywood, than Congress, and President Obama. Well, I'm glad that you raised that because I thought what was absolutely appalling, as I say in, in one of my columns there for Breitbart News, absolutely appalling that this president did during that press conference, more appalling than exploiting young children up on stage, even if that's possible, is that he said, if any member of Congress does not support my gun control bills, uh, ask them which is more important, uh, maintaining an A rating with the gun lobby, which is just a neat way to try and demonize the NRA, calling them the gun lobby. They're not the gun lobby. They represent 90 million gun owners across the country. But saying what's more important, protecting your A rating with the gun lobby that funds their campaigns, which we all know, by the way, would be illegal, so that doesn't happen either. What's more important, doing that or giving parents peace of mind when they drop off their kids for first grade? I thought that that was just, uh, that was so deplorable that our head of state, just flat out says, any other elected officials who disagree with me, they are willing to sacrifice children's safety to line their own pockets in their campaigns. They are venal, they are venal, unworthy, disgraceful politicians who are willing to endanger your children for political gain. That is, that is so far from the truth, it is a flat out falsehood, and it demeans the office of the president for Barack Obama to make such an outrageous and insulting comment. I can again I'm right there with you. Uh what would the president say you think for a guy who voted against a bill uh or or excuse me not voted against who voted let's say uh present uh when a bill came up that would have provided for adult criminal prosecution of a minor at least 15 years of age who's charged with aggravated battery with a firearm committed in a school on the real property comprising a school within a thousand feet of the real property comprising a school at a school related activity on or within a thousand feet of a conveyance owned, leased, or contracted by a school or school district to transport students to uh, or from school or a school related activity. In other words, up in the penalties for juvenile school shooters. Uh, what, what do you think the president would have said 
about a politician who voted present on something like that. Yeah, I saw the news story on that. Uh, evidently, uh, we know what the, his hometown Chicago Tribune says about that. They said when President Obama voted present on exactly that bill as an Illinois state senator, the Chicago Tribune called him gutless. That was their, was it gutless sheep or it was it was gutless and some sort of animal. I mean, it was it was a it was a, it was quite a smack coming from such a uh, coming from such a left wing newspaper that you would think is 99% of the time, you know, praising Barack Obama and what he's trying to do, uh, his refusal to take a stand uh, to, uh, to, for, for children's safety and to stop gun violence in that made his own left-wing, uh, left-wing Chicago Tribune rag call him gutless. Their words, not ours. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, listen, Ken, you know, as you... As you're examining all of uh, uh, these issues that are uh, coming out here, and of course all of the rhetoric um, and this divisive rhetoric, wh- wh- where do you where do you see this debate going? Let's say over the next uh, next couple of weeks. Well, I'll tell you, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see legislative proposals, and we're going to see these executive actions. I am just now getting the text of those. Mm-hmm. I want to see which ones are executive orders versus which ones are some other sort of presidential action. Also, to clarify for your readers, because there's been a lot of confusion about this, executive orders only apply. A president can issue executive orders to employees under him in the executive branch of the federal government. Uh, he cannot issue orders to Congress or the courts, to state governments, or to any private citizen or or private company or organization. An executive order is only within the federal government, and then the only way that impacts private entities then is if he issues an executive order to a a cabinet-level secretary, like Attorney General Holder or Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, ordering them to issue regulations on a matter where an act of Congress authorizes those regulations. And then, of course, regulations carry the force of law, but they are subordinate to any act of Congress. So if any federal regulation that Obama orders one of them to make, if if either they violate any federal statute on the books or if they violate any provision of the U.S. Constitution, like, for example, the Second Amendment, uh, then we can take it to court under what's called the Administrative Procedure Act, and uh, we should be able to clean his clock. Okay. Listen, Ken, thank you again for coming on the program, sir. Great talking to you, and enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Cam. You too.